Hi, I'm Barbara and this is Marcelino. We're with Fuse Business Training. Good morning, everyone. Just wanted to introduce ourselves for a little bit and get to know each and every one of you as well, hopefully in the future. So Barbara, can you please tell me how you got here? I think our audience is interested in knowing. Yeah, for sure. I actually started this journey that led us to where we are now 13 years ago. Wow. And what has led you to that? I originally started as a business student in college and I was creating this program. It was one of our assignments. We were supposed to create a fake business. Okay. I chose to be a virtual assistant. And I created this entire business, binders and everything, of what this business would look like if it were real. And I had did that, and even after the assignment was over, I still kept creating that business. Never with any intention to actually have that business. Wow. <laughs> and the way that it started that I had the business was in 2010, actually 2009, I got put on bed rest for a high risk pregnancy. So here I was working full time, paying part of the bills at our house, and then the doctor said, you can't work for 10 months. And at that time, I decided to start this business that I created as a real business. So you had a lot of time to sit and think then. I did, yeah. I was working from my bed, and the interesting thing was I was working 40 hours a week as a receptionist before I went on bed rest. And the very first week of me working from home, I was making more money than I was at my full-time job. So it was a no-brainer then. Yeah. Although, you know, you would think it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. But when I had Haley, she ended up being he healthy and she's eight years old now today. But when I had her, my first instinct was that I had to go back to my job. And it took a lot of for me emotionally and mentally to be like, wait, I don't have to go back there. I can actually keep doing this. <laughs> that's a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. And then what else? What are, Do you think there's anything else that led you to this path? Anything in your, in, inside your soul that speaks to you about this? Well, you know, I've always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Ever okay. since I was young, my parents didn't really get to come to any of our stuff when we were younger. We didn't get to play sports. And when we had, like, recitals at school, you know, Grandparents' Day and stuff, we didn't really have very many people who showed up to that. So as a kid, I used to think, there's no way I'm going to miss these things for my kids. I mean, my mom was doing the best she could to support four kids on her own. So she had to work. She didn't have a choice. And so I always thought there's no way that I could miss these things. I'm going to do whatever I can to work from home so I can set my own hours and be able to be at all their stuff. Well, when I got pregnant with Haley, who was my third kid, and I went on bed rest, that's when I finally got to live that dream of being a stay-at-home mom. I loved it. The kids loved it. Never went back. And, um, and so it went great for the first couple years. In fact, I had never marketed uh, or advertised. I, it was all word of mouth. My business grew so much in just a couple of months, all by word of mouth. And it went on like that for years where it was just me working my butt off, you know, like entrepreneurs do. <laughs> and it came to a point when I realized there wasn't enough of me to go around for what people needed. So I tried to build a team. At that time, I was not a good leader. <laughs> so the team that I built didn't succeed. I tried again without getting any proper leadership training. So inevitably, that team failed too. And I kept repeating that cycle until finally I decided I was just going to do it on my own because nobody could do it like I could. <laughs> uh, that burnt me out, of course. And I went through a transition of having to let go a lot of my clients because I just couldn't make the time for them. I had to choose to either be a busy entrepreneur and not have any time with my kids or to be able to be the mom that went to all those games and recitals and not have as many clients. Okay. That was a hard decision to make. But at the end of the day, I decided that I wanted to work from home for a reason. And so I, at one point I had almost 30 monthly clients that I was working five to 10 hours a month for. It was just me and I cut that down to five in a matter of a month because I wanted to spend more time with my kids. Okay. And what has, what do you think has changed since then? Well, what ended up happening was when I cut down those 21 to five, those, some of those people started asking me, could you teach me how to do what you were doing so that I can keep doing it or so I can train someone else to do it? 
of course I want people to succeed. So I said, yeah. And I started teaching them one by one. I'd go to one person's house and teach them how to use Microsoft Word. And then I'd go to another person's office and I would teach them how to use Microsoft Word. And I kept doing it until one of my clients said, why don't you just teach us all together? And I had one of those moments of, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> so I started teaching in small groups. The small groups led to large groups. Okay. In fact, there was one particular class that I remember real vividly that gave me this moment of this is what I'm meant to do. And funny enough, it was also a Microsoft Word class. Yeah. Now, I don't want to confuse people. I do so much more than Microsoft Word. That's just where I started so many years ago. And in that class, I had people all the way from complete beginners, they've never even heard of Microsoft Word, to somebody who was certified in Microsoft Word and everything in between I had in that class. And at the end of class, I had asked if anybody had any feedback. Because I, at this point, I was trying to determine if I was going to start teaching classes rather than groups. Okay. And the person who had never heard of Microsoft Word said, I don't know where this has been my whole life, and I'm so happy that you taught me and that you were so patient and, and you didn't go too fast, and I really understand it. I'm looking forward to using it. When I heard that, I thought, oh boy, that means that the person who was an expert is going to think that this was too slow. But then she said, you know, I, what I appreciated most about it is that you adapted to the classroom. You gave instructions to the beginners, but then you gave us experts something harder to do. And you reminded me of things that I totally forgot existed in this program. And so, and of course, in, all the in-betweeners had the same kind of feelings of that they felt very satisfied. They didn't feel like it was too fast or too slow. And I was standing there and I was holding a cup of coffee and I remember thinking, Oh God, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I mean, I can ge definitely genuinely tell every single time I've seen you in classes, you you feel, you look like you're right at home, you look like you're enjoying yourself. And I, I've heard so much feedback from people that have worked with you in the past of exactly, exactly like you said, you love it. You love this stuff. I do. And that's why I guess uh, I was attracted to this business because I saw the passion that you have for it. And I think that's awesome with it. especially everybody else, everybody you come in contact with, I've heard the same thing with. So I'm excited for where we're going with this. Good. I'm really excited too, Mars. And you know, when we first sat down many months ago, I'm going to share a little bit with the group here and let them know that Marcelino and I have actually been friends for about a year or so now. Mm -hmm. And we've regularly met for breakfast or lunch or sometimes just coffee about every month or two in this past however long we've been friends. And every time we were always keeping each other accountable for succeeding. Yeah. We we're sharing resources with each other. We we're bringing a book for each other yeah. often. And we were really focused on our personal and prof professional growth. And it was nice to have somebody else who was interested in that to be like, well, how are you doing? Are you still waking up at 5 a.m.? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and just have somebody to check in with like that. And then a couple of months ago, Mars and I had breakfast and he started sharing with me about this dream that he had um, of being a professional development trainer. And so at first I started giving him some tips and ideas of how he could do that because it's similar to what I've been doing in Fuse for the past decade. And so I started sharing with him some ideas and then it hit me, Mars, why don't we partner up? <laughs> That was a great day. Yeah, it was. And so now we have what where I've come from, professional development, and then where you actually excel even more in is personal development. And then we're meshing these two together. And not that neither of us can't do the other one. We both do the other. It's just nice to have one of us stronger in one suit and the other one stronger in the other because it's a nice mix. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, everything is personal development. It uh, doesn't matter what it is that you're learning, but it is a perfect mesh of what we do, of what I love to do, what you love to do, and combine it together and we can provide it to everybody else. Exactly. And I think we have, and I know we have a great um, enthusiasm and love and passion for what we do that I know I've seen it in both of our clients and I know there's people that are asking all the time um, just for more information for where what can they get more from us or just the ideas uh, through breakfast through meetings 
doesn't matter how and I think this is going to be a great future uh, for the both of us and for our community members and for all those around us as well or anybody looking to get into business uh, entrepreneurs or just um, develop anybody that wants to change their life or where they're currently at exactly and you know one of the things that I really loved about Marcelino with his personal development is that you hit it right on the nail when we talked many months ago and said if you're personal life is in chaos how can you run your business right and it and i was like that's so true and in my roadmap that you'll learn more about the roadmap here in a little bit but with my roadmap i've created this step-by-step -step program of cr creating a business how to start that business how to make sure you're in the right business and then all of the steps along the way including the people you should be connecting with at this step in your business the resources you'll need at this step some of the challenges that you're going to face when you're at this step of your business and all of those things encompassed professional growth and then after meeting with you i realized we needed a whole module at the beginning on personal growth because you're right if if you can't handle your day-to-day -day personal life it's going to be stressful to handle your business Absolutely. and nobody likes a stressful business because then you complain that business is hard or business isn't worth it but the truth of the matter is that we're in america where this is the land of opportunity Absolutely. you know business should be fun and it shouldn't be hard and that's one thing i've been preaching for the past decade of you know work smarter not harder so mars would you share with our viewers what led you to this journey all the way up to where you are now as a new fuse owner absolutely well it has been a it has been a journey uh, basically I came up my roots um, neither of my parents got to go to high school so I had to do a lot of learning myself here in this country as well I was born and raised here in Chicago um, I knew from an early age that if I wanted anything I needed to work for it so I started working when I was like 13 14 years old as a bus boy dishwasher in restaurants um, but luckily, I had a great mentor from the beginning. Uh, his name was Dean Vallis from Country House Restaurant. Uh, he started ingraining seeds in my head since I was young about uh, growing yourself. So little by little, somehow I got into management. Um, even so, I was about 17 years old. So I was going to DePaul University in downtown Chicago. I was living on the 12th floor. I was a manager on the second floor. It was, <laughs> it was great. You know, I just had to go down the elevator for a little bit. But that's when I got into... The management aspect and then I just I've always had a knack for people following what I say and then I, I guess that has to do because I'm the oldest brother of five <laughs> five siblings um, but I've always had a good knack of being a leader uh, just came, it has come natural to me and then people do they flock to me and they uh, listen to what I got to say and I take that extremely seriously um, especially with what my mentor had told me Dean um, if people do follow you got that responsibility to change somebody change somebody's life that's gonna that's gonna affect everybody for sure and that's that's the mentality I've taken I mean uh, I've always excelled in school I did uh, I, I failed for the first time in school when I got to college but that's because I found out that I was doing things for the wrong reason um, so and then I would try to figure out why why am I failing I never almost I was not used to failure got straight A's all through and uh, grammar school high school and then that's when I started failing so I started delving into myself and then that's when I started reading all the self-help books self-development books Tony Robbins Robin Sharma um, so many other books that started giving me sparks of idea and then I had to just had to get back to basics you know uh, that was the hardest part I think just getting past that first failure mm. and then little by little helping myself and then once I figured it out I saw so many other people around me, starting with my brothers and my father, that were having issues. I'm like, well, I read about something like that. Let's try this. And that was the biggest thing that I had to make it practical. I don't want anything in theory because in theory, everything sounds nice. But unless you actually are out there doing it and practicing it, you don't really know what works for you. What might work for you might not work for this other person. Right. So I just I love it because it's a puzzle every single time everybody is different everybody has a different uh, definition of success and everybody learns different um, at the end of the day that's what that's how all of us are the same is that everybody's different yeah I like that and then with that it's just personal development has always been my passion and I willingly 
will skip games, will do anything else if I see there's a good video or a good book that I just got, if it's on personal development. Anything else? Probably not. But at the end of the day, personal development, it's just, that's my fire. And because of that, I am i was so glad to meet you. And it's just little things that I hear from you, from other friends that we have and our surroundings that just made me realize, like, you know, like, this is what I should be doing. Mm-hmm. And absolutely. And then the other day when we were, uh, we were giving a class to somebody, we were talking and just looking at their faces of how they were taking the knowledge or the information that we were given that's when I figured out you know this is this is where I want to be this is where I should be yeah good very good almost made me cry there (laughs) so thanks again everyone for watching this is Barbara Carr I'm Marcelino Flores if you're interested in anything with business training personal development anything in between please follow us email us send us a text We'll be more than happy to help you, and we're looking forward to talking with you. Have a great day.